All right, and up next, let's talk about ES6 modules or a way for us to split up our application into multiple files and, of course, folders and have the ability to import and export the code, which essentially helps us to organize our application. Because if we take a look at the index.js, I mean, everything is awesome. We have the list, we iterate over, we have the book component, and all of that is great. But you can probably imagine that as our application grows, this is not sustainable. I mean, we need to have some kind of way where we can split up the code, correct? Where we have separate functionalities in different places. And then if we need that, if we need the component or data or whatever, we just access it. And the way we do that is by using ES6 modules, which again are not unique to React. React just uses them. And if you have ever used Node before, in the previous versions of Node, they used to use only common JS. Now they also use ES6 modules. And again, it's the same principle, just the syntax is a little bit different. And you'll see it's extremely straightforward. So, first, I just want to remove all the get book logic. As always, it's available in the README if you ever need a reference. So I don't need to get book and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to need the ID. My apologies if I will and if I'll have to rewrite. Hopefully you can forgive me and I don't need the button. Okay, good. Let's remove that. And now essentially I want to come up with a file name. We have two flavors when it comes to imports and exports, we have a named one, and we have a default one. As always, you can use whichever you prefer. In most cases, what you'll see, if you have, let's say a one component in the file, you'll do that as a default one. And if you have multiples, they will be named. Now, is it the only way how you can do that? No, but if I'll show you pretty much every flavor of import and export, this video is going to be two hours long. So we'll focus on two main ones, named export and default export. And the only thing we need to understand is that when we import with a named one, we need to use the same name. So name must, 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 must be the same. And with the default one, we can come up with whatever value we want. Literally, that's the main difference. So first, let's go to source and let's create books.js and book.js. So this is going to be for our component, and this is going to be for our data. And then I want to remove books array from index.js, and I want to add it to books.js. So let's try this one out. New file, I'm going to go with books.js. That's where I'll have my data. And yes, of course, I can name this data as well if I want. And I'm going to go with book.js. And let's start with the books array. So let's get the data away from the index. So let's clean up this file. So I want to cut it out and I want to place it in the books. And of course, the moment I save, I'll have big fat error. Why? Because books is not defined. Of course, I'm accessing it over here, but there is no books anymore. So in here, we have this array. And like I said, we have two flavors. And essentially with books, I'll show you both. And then with the book one, we'll just use the default one. So in here, I can go with export. Notice, I simply want to go with export and then whatever variable I'm exporting or function or hopefully you see where I'm going with this. Now, again, there are a few different flavors to this, but we'll just stick with the most common ones. So we save over here and then back in the index, we need to repeat these steps. However, this is our own file. So this is where that path comes into play, where we go with import. And this is extremely, extremely important. We need to go with curlies, which means that we'll be getting a specific item, meaning the item we're exporting is exported as named export. So this needs to match exactly what I have in the file. Then from, and what do you know? I'm looking for the books. And remember, I told you, when we covered CSS, with JavaScript files, we don't need to do that. Anymore. And the moment we save, check it out, everything works. Now, if I'm going to go here with carrot, banana, or whatever, 
Bob, it's not going to work. So this is exported as books. So anywhere, anywhere in your application, you need to access books. So that's a must. You cannot just willy nilly come up with a different name. So that's the first option we have. Let me go here with books. And like I said, I'll show you right away both of them, but we'll stick with the named one. Now, alternatively, here's what we can do. I can remove this export for now. And I could say export default. And then, of course, I need to reference the books. One thing we need to keep in mind that we can only have one default export per file. So you cannot have like 10 default exports. That's the whole point that you have one default export. And the biggest difference is that in the index.js, we don't have any more this syntax. We simply need to go with import and pretty much we're saying we're importing anything. And this could be banana. And I just need to change it here, of course, right? So I need to go here with banana. And of course, everything works. So hopefully this gives you a good idea. Again, named and default. And the biggest difference is that with default, we actually can name it however we want in the index JS. And this is something that we talked about it before where you can technically set up a component with lowercase and export it. But when you import, you will still have to use the uppercase. So first, let me just go back to the name one. Export, we we'll use like I said, the default one in the book component. Let's remove this. And then in the index JS. That's when we want to go back to the books. Little detour. My apologies. And now let's go with the component. The reason why I showed you both, I don't want you to think that you can only do default with a component. You can do with any data. So up next, let's take this sucker out. Let's remove. And where I have book JS copy and paste. And remember the extension that I used before. So the snippets one, check it out, I can of course create the component this way as well. And notice how I right away have that export default book. So now you know what that line of code is doing. So let me copy and paste again. And we're going to go with export, export default. And we're looking for the book component. Then we're going to navigate back. And we want to go with import and book from the book. Also, I want to right away mention that technically VS Code tries to provide the auto import. And when I say technically, because I mean, unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't work. But don't be surprised if, for example, you see me or some other instructor doing something like this, where I can go with book, and then notice how it right away sets up that component. Now, of course, I'm not passing anything in here, and it's looking for those props and all that. But hopefully you see that. Yes, I can type the component, and Visual Studio Code is going to try to help me. And the reason why I say tries to help you, because here and there, it just fails. So let me remove this one. The import is in place. And as you can see, the logic still works. I still have my list, and everything is correct. The difference right now is that I've nicely split up my code, where the component is in one place. So if I ever need to come back, I can just navigate to a book JS. This is all the logic for this one. And you already know that we can add code, remove code, and right away, all the components are going to be affected. And the same goes with book JS. In few videos, we will cover how to set up local images in the source folder, which essentially is a better approach because there's some optimizations happening under the hood. So the result is better. And yes, all the work we're only going to do in books.js. So we won't have to run back to index.js. As long as the import is correct, we're good to go. Again, these are ES6 modules, they're not specific to react, you can use them in vanilla JS, you can use them in node. And essentially, they help us to organize our application.